Hello everybody, Andrea Majeski here with Dental World Tutoring. In the video today, I want to talk to you guys about soft deposits because I still find students tend to get them confused. So we're going to talk about the difference between plaque and tartar and what exactly happens. Um, because even when you start to work, patients will ask you things that you may think is obvious, but they will ask you things like, so what is plaque exactly? And you don't want to go, um, it's the white stuff on your teeth, you know, how else do you explain that, right? So I will be going in depth a little bit more for you. So I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, if you're a member inside the dental hygiene um, or the dental assisting courses, so if you are a Dental L member, this is what the PowerPoint looks like. And I'll just quickly show you inside one of the courses. So depending on the course that you are in, this um, membership login area may look a little bit different to you. But um, it is under the disease prevention one right here. So you, so you just have to click that. And then it's labeled soft deposits here. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys that, but if you're not a member, um, feel free to sign up to get sort of the whole PowerPoint and to get a lot more because I'm just going to go through a little bit of it today. Okay, so plaque first and foremost, those are your soft um, deposits. Even as you are cleaning teeth, sometimes plaque can be quite thin and sometimes plaque can be thicker. So you might mistake thicker plaque as being hard, but it's not, okay? Um, to keep it simple, plaque always forms first, okay? First you have your pellicle after you eat, drink, anything. Like that literally starts to form within a second. But then plaque comes after that. So if you're not brushing twice a day, if you're not flossing every day, that plaque becomes thicker and thicker and thicker. And what I tell our patients is I do tell them that, you know, you want to limit that plaque as much as possible. So that is why we always say to brush at least twice a day and to use the floss every day. Because if you're not, that plaque then becomes hard. And the hard tartar you cannot take off with your instrument. So that's what I say. Um, so to get more in depth, so plaque is a dense, non-mineralized mass of bacteria, pretty much, in a intermicrobial matrix. So tell your patients that plaque harbors bacteria. So when they're not brushing twice a day, when they're not using the floss, that is bacteria sitting there, okay? If you had bacteria on your arm, or if you decided to not wash your hands all day, it's the same thing. That bacteria just sits there and you don't want that. So you can have plaque above the gum line and underneath the gum line as well. So even if a patient has pockets of maybe a one or two, that is still having that plaque underneath in that area, okay? So just something to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, so I do talk about the pellicle, which I did mention a little bit. So a lot of patients will say, well, I brush, you know, I, I do I do everything that I'm supposed to do. So should I then not have plaque ever? So let them know that there's a pellicle that forms right away. So if we eat, drink anything, it just sort of happens within a second. So there's no bacteria in that, but it makes it a lot easier for plaque to attach onto the teeth. So technically the plaque isn't attaching to our enamel, but it's attaching to the pellicle on the enamel. So if you want to talk about that with your patients, if they're still like, okay, wait a minute. So if I floss every day, if I brush twice a day, why do I have plaque? You know, then I like to mention the pellicle and then they go, oh, okay. So if you have saliva, it's just easier for that pellicle to form. But at the same time, your pellicle helps to protect the teeth also against eating and drinking because we tend to eat and drink things that are quite acidic right? So it does help to protect, but it can harm too. So it does help to protect in protecting our enamel against the harsh, you know, um, environments that we tend to eat and drink and expose the mouth to. But then it does, um, it does harm us because it allows plaque to attach. Plaque is what harbors bacteria. If plaque stays there, it turns into tartar. So it's kind of like a good thing and a bad thing. 
Um, so then stage two, so this is where things start to grow, you know, per se, and this is when um, the bacteria happens. So anytime we are eating something, so think specifically gram-positive bacteria. So that is stage two. So this is still talking about your pellicle. So as soon as the pellicle starts to form, stage one pretty much, there's no bacteria. But then stage two, it it's you know thicker um, and then it does have bacteria gram positive to be specific and then stage three it gets thicker and thicker and that is when plaque starts to form so i made it a little bit easier here um something to memorize for the board exam um all of the members have this but um feel free to stop the video if you would like to look a little bit further. Um, sub gingival. So yes, it can go underneath the gum line. As soon as that happens, it tends to be more gram negative. So something else to look at. There's still a mix of gram positive in there, but as soon as it goes to be gram or sorry, underneath the gum line, then it's more gram negative. Now, if the plaque stays on there, it depends on the textbook you read. It could be 24 hours, it could be 12 hours, it could be 72 hours that forms calculus, forms tartar, and then plaque forms on top of calculus, and then there's more calculus, it's just a big mess, right? So I tell patients that calculus, um, calculus, you cannot take off with your toothbrush. So no matter how hard you try, if it gets to that point, you need to come to the dentist to see us to actually take it off. Because if it stays there, that's a lot of bacteria and then the plaque forms on top of that and then more bacteria yucky right so it's just not a nice thing um and i made a note here that if a patient's using an anti-tartar toothpaste so they do help because they have um higher levels i have that right here of uh parotid pyrophosphate so usually in the toothpaste it says some type of pyrophosphate that just helps they say to i guess break down the tartar a little bit more or or it helps to prevent it from forming in the first place but the thing about those toothpastes is that a lot of patients tend to be allergic to them um that's what they're starting to find so their gums actually get more red because they might actually be having a reaction to the toothpaste so yes they might be having less tartar but then they come to see you and their gums are red and you're thinking okay why are the gums red when the plaque and tartar is actually minimal so that could be happening so i tend to only suggest that type of toothpaste to somebody who's like they need to come in every three months they have a lot of plaque a lot of tartar then that might help with that so just something to make note of that those anti-calculus toothpaste do have the pyrophosphate in them okay so calculus can form of course above the gum line and then underneath as well um, read over this if you like but those are just kind of the main points so calculus attachment so it does attach onto plaque of course okay um, and it can attach anywhere so I have seen tartar on the um, occlusal surfaces where you might not think there's plaque there but there is even just a little bit so it does like to um, attached to anything. And I'll let you guys read this over if you like. Um, once again, if you are a member, you have all of this, but it just sort of goes more in depth of the pellicle, of plaque, how it starts, how it continues, um, how it gets thicker. And then I do talk about um, if a patient's just having such a hard time with their oral health, then we might have to take it a step further and uh, suggest other things such as antibiotics to go underneath the gum line. So I will let you guys read through that if you like. So there's tons of things in this unit here. Um, I made them as simple as possible to kind of read through because you do have all of this in your textbook. But um, I have 16 slides here, whereas in the textbook, it was probably two chapters. And you don't need to know all of that for the board exam but at the same time if you've been looking at those two chapters like two or three um, depending on the textbook you read you might need this to sort of bring it all into play you know because it's one thing to read those chapters and then to go okay i don't even know what i just read 
you know, read this first to get an idea and then feel free to go back to the, to the chapters to kind of read that, that over. And then you will probably say, oh, now it's starting to make more sense. So I hope this helped, you know, plaque, tartar, what happens and to just make it easier to explain to your patients as well. So if you guys need anything, let me know. And thank you so much for watching. I am uploading videos at least twice a week now. So if you guys need to um, need me to talk about anything in particular, if you need help with something, let me know. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.